Hello and welcome to the online ministry of New Westminster Christian Reformed Church. We hope that today's message will be a word of encouragement for you from our Lord Jesus Christ. If you would like to contact our church or our pastors, please visit our website at nwrcrc.ca. May God bless you. Good morning, everyone. Happy New Year once again. My name is uh, June. If you don't know me, I'm one of the pastors here at New West CRC. And on this first day of 2023, it is my joy and privilege to open God's word with you. As you, ha- as you have heard a few times today, we come to the end of our sermon series through the book of Daniel. We began uh, last September, uh, took a break during Advent, but if you remember, we still have a few more verses left in chapter 12 uh, to look at. So it is my prayer that this morning, uh, as we come to the end of the series, uh, God will allow us to be able to finish this series in a meaningful way, and as we do so also, He will speak to us his words of encouragement and comfort as we begin this new chapter, new year. Uh, Since it's been a while, let me remind us of where we are in the book of Daniel. Uh, Back in chapter 10, Daniel had yet another vision, his last and final vision. And it happened in the third year of Cyrus, the king of Persia. And at that time, we read Daniel was standing by the great river, the river Tigris, as he was uh, being given the vision. And it was a long one. If you remember, the vision begins in chapter 1, verse 1, continues through chapter 11, and, and finishes at, uh, ends in chapter 12, verse 4. And that's where we took off uh, before Advent. So today, we come back to chapter 12, beginning at verse 5, uh, where we learn that Daniel is still there, still standing by the riverside, uh, asking questions about this overwhelming vision he just received. So let's turn to our passage, Daniel chapter 12, verses 5 to 13. Then I, Daniel, looked, and there before me stood two others, one on this bank of the river and one on the opposite bank. One of them said to the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river, how long will it be before these astonishing things are fulfilled? The man in cloth, the man clothed in linen who was above the waters of the river lifted his right hand and his left hand toward heaven. And I heard him swear by him who lives forever, saying, it will be for a time, times, and half half a time. When the power of the holy people has been finally broken, all these things will be completed. I heard, but I did not understand. So I asked, my Lord, what will the outcome of all this be? He replied, go your way, Daniel, because the words are rolled up and sealed until the time of the end. Many will be purified, made spotless and refined, but the wicked will continue to be wicked. None of the wicked will understand, but those who are wise will understand. understand. From the time that the daily sacrifice is abolished and the abomination that causes desolation is set up, there will be 1,290 days. Blessed is the one who waits for and reaches the end of the 1,335 days. As for you, go your way till the end. You will rest, and then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. So that's the end of the book of Daniel. And I'm pretty sure that many of us resonated with Daniel when he said in verse 8, I heard, 
but I did not understand. <laughs> but one thing you might have noticed uh, is that much of these words are not new. We have heard them before. Uh, for example, the question, how long? How long until these things are fulfilled was the question already asked in Daniel chapter 8. And the answer given in our passage, it will be for a time, times and half a time, was mentioned in, back in chapter 7. The promise that God's people will be purified and will be made spotless is also found in chapter 11 of the book of Daniel. And the command for Daniel to seal these words until the end of time was also mentioned earlier in chapter 12, verse 4. So as much as it is uh, not easy to understand all these details, uh, we have seen them before. And so here's the good news. This morning, I'm not going to focus too much on those details. Maybe not good news if you're curious, uh, but what I'm going to do this morning, which I rarely do in, in my preaching, is that I'm going to focus on just one verse. Uh, verse 13, the last verse of the book, where it says, As for you, Daniel, go your way till the end. You will rest, and then at the end of the days you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. Now, I'm saying we're going to focus on this one verse, but with everything that we have been learning and, and seeing in the book of Daniel, all that, uh, that we have learned, all that God has showed us, showed Daniel, with that in mind, we're going to be looking at this one verse. So after this long and exhausting vision, the final vision that he had, Daniel asks this question. What does it mean? I don't understand. What is going to be the outcome of all this, all these visions? And this is what God tells Daniel through this mysterious divine being speaking to him. Daniel, go your way until the end. Keep going until the end. Continue on. Have you ever seen one of these posters somewhere? How many of you have seen this before? Yeah, I have seen it many times, uh, but I didn't know exactly what this was. So I looked up and I learned that this was a poster produced by the British government in 1939 in preparation for the Second World War. I don't know if you knew that. They printed 2.5 million copies of these posters to encourage people to, well, to keep calm and to continue on with their lives. And I think in some sense, that's what God is saying to Daniel. After this overwhelming vision, when he had lots of questions, when he was anxious, when he did not understand the outcome of all this, God tells Daniel, keep calm and continue on. Two times he tells Daniel, Daniel, go your way until the end. That's the conclusion of this book. Keep calm, carry on until the end. And on this first day of the new year, 2023, some of us are maybe excited of this new year. Some maybe uh, are very uncertain about what this year holds for us. As Patrick prayed for us, we are all in a different situation, expecting different things. Perhaps you might be asking, what will this year be like? What will happen? What am I to expect? Keep calm. Go your way until the end. Perhaps you are in a situation in which, with Daniel, you're saying, How long? How long, God? Until when? Go on. Go your way until the end. 
as you and I, as we were together going through the book of Daniel, based on some feedback that I had received, some of you really liked it, and some of you are happy that today is the last day. Let's put it that way. It's okay. Either way, one thing that I hope that you have noticed, one thing that I hope you have learned through this in-depth of reading Daniel is that now you see Daniel differently. Now you see Daniel differently. Many of you, including myself, probably thought of Daniel as a young man, smart, capable, successful, who had a very successful political career in the foreign land. That's our typical depiction of Daniel. And that's not incorrect. All that is, uh, none of those are wrong. But as you might have experienced, a careful reading through the book, the whole book, probably has changed for you some of those typical depictions of Daniel. As we have seen, for the most part in the book, Daniel is old. He is weak. He is lonely. He is mistreated. He is surrounded by people who hate him, who are jealous of him. And he is waiting, and he has been waiting for more than 70 years. And he is disappointed. At this point, he is now in, likely in his 90s, with no family, no children. That means no descendants to carry on his name. Most likely, he was a eunuch. That's what happened to the young boys who were taken to Babylon uh, to serve the king. So this is it. He's coming to the end of his life. And like anyone's life, Daniel's life has been filled with successes and failures, joys and sorrows, hopes and disappointments. And today on this first day of the new year, I'm going to make a prophecy. I'm going to prophesy. <laughs> this year, you will have, you will experience successes and failures. You will experience joy and sorrow. You will experience hopes and disappointments. Yes, we have hope in God, but our Christian hope is different from optimism, blind optimism. The world keeps telling us that we can fix our problems. We can fix our problems if we buy certain products. We can fix our problems if we go to certain schools or have certain jobs. We can fix our problems if we meet the right person. One commentator by the name of Ian Dugid puts it this way. We live in an age in which we expect everything to be fixable. There is a pervasive air of pragmatic optimism in our society, born out of a generation steeped in the notion that if every morning you just repeat the saying, in every way and every day I am getting better and better, you surely will. If your teeth aren't straight, orthodontics will set them right. If you don't like your body shape, try cosmetic surgery. If your job frustrates you, search the classified advertisements for new opportunities that will fulfill your potential. Whatever our problem is, we have been trained to believe that someone out there has the answer that will fix it. But you and I know, deep in our hearts, that the brokenness we see in ourselves, the brokenness we see in our lives, and the brokenness the utter brokenness we see in the world cannot simply be fixed. I think that was the common theme in all of our Advent sermons that we heard in December. Some things won't be fixed on this side of the glory. And that's why we wait. We wait for the day when God 
will not just fix things, but he will recreate them. And that has always been the promise of God. The Bible is full of those examples, but in Isaiah 65, we read God promising, See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. I will rejoice over Jerusalem and take delight in my people. The sound of weeping and of crying will be heard no more. And this glorious promise of the future, new creation in the future, completely changes how we live today. Future hope changes and transforms our lives today. It changed Daniel's life, as we have seen in the book of Daniel, chapters 1 to 6. And this promise ought to change our lives, ought to change how we live today in this world. So God says, as for you, go your way until the end. And how can we do that? What enables us to be able to go on? What's the promise? Here it is. You will rest. And then at the end of the days, you will rise to receive your allotted inheritance. You will rest, you will rise, and you will receive. And you thought I didn't have my three points today. Here it is. That's how we go on until the end. The promise that we will rest and we will rise and we will receive God's inheritance is how we can go on and not give up. That's how we go on with hope, not despair. So let's take a time and think about each of those promises briefly before we finish. First, God promises us that you will rest. Now, you will rest simply means you will die. How is that supposed to be comforting? Well, listen to the same commentator again. Ian Dugit says, There is a rest that awaits Daniel after his earthly work is done, and it awaits us as well. If we persevere by faith through God's grace in doing the task he has set before us to do in this broken world, then there is a glorious eternal rest prepared for us when our sin will be done away with and our guilt will be cleansed forever in that age all of our brokenness will finally be fixed along with the brokenness of the present created order so whether you are in babylon or you are in jerusalem whether you are now in Persia or Greece or Rome or Burnaby, Vancouver, to those who go on their ways until the end, and this end means the end of our lives, there is this promise of God's rest. But this rest, as good as it is, is not the end because God says, You will rest, you will die. And then at the end of the days, that is the end of the world, you will rise. The book of Daniel is, in the Old Testament, one of the places where we hear the clearest teachings and promises of resurrection of God's people. But resurrection, if you think about it, resurrection itself is not good news. Because there are two possibilities. We didn't read this, but earlier in the chapter, Daniel 12, verse 2 says, In the vision, Daniel hears, Multitudes who sleep in the dust, who are dead of the earth, will awake, will arise. Some to everlasting life, others 
to shame and everlasting contempt. So you will rise. All people will rise, but some to everlasting life of joy and peace and others to everlasting shame and contempt. So what's the good news? The good news is that those who put their trust in the sun and believe in him will rise at the end of the days to eternal life. Those are the words of Jesus Christ, our Lord. In John 6, Jesus says, My Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. And later in John 11, He says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. Christ is risen from the dead and became the first fruit of all God's people who will rise to everlasting life. Everlasting life in him. This promise, this understanding that this world is not all there is is the foundation of how we go on with our lives until the end. This is the basis for our perseverance. This is the basis of our faithfulness in this life. As we age, as we suffer, as we wait, as we experience disappointments, we go on. We go on longing and knowing the wholeness of God's new creation that we will fully and completely enjoy forever. So go your way. As for you, go your way till the end. You will rest, you will rise, and you will receive your inheritance. You will receive your inheritance. This has, been, this has always been God's intention for his people from the beginning. For us to be people of God's inheritance. Already earlier in the Old Testament, we read in Deuteronomy 4.20, As for you, the Lord took you and brought you out of Egypt to be the people of his inheritance, as you are, as you now are. And then in the New Testament, we have lots of examples of this inheritance of God, but Peter puts it this way. 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Our inheritance in Christ is imperishable. It will never spoil, it will never fade. And this inheritance in Christ is kept for you. You, who through faith are shielded by God's power, protected by him until the end. Until the end. Until Christ will come again to recreate. Until God's kingdom will fully arrive on this earth. And in the meantime, we go on our ways knowing that God is in control. And that when we die, when we rest and rise, we will receive the glorious inheritance. And the amazing truth is that, as I think about this, the amazing truth is that on that day, we will rise with Daniel and all the other saints to receive our final inheritance and to be with our Lord forever. 
as I was preparing this sermon, actually yesterday, I came across this news article titled, There Are No Guarantees in Life. There are no guarantees in life. Well, I kind of already knew that. But it was one of my professors uh, from Regent who shared this article on his social media. So I was intrigued and started reading the article. It was from a local newspaper in Winnipeg. And the article was about a pastor of a large church in, in the city in Winnipeg who is known for, who used to teach and preach that God promises his people health and healing. And he said, if you are a Christian, you will not be sick. And if you get sick, God will heal you no matter what. And this pastor died at the age of 59 from cancer. Now, it, it is not my intention to in any way disparage the pastor or the church, but simply noticing that this local newspaper was reminding people that there are no guarantees in life. There, are, there, there were no guarantees of, of health and healing in Daniel's life. There are no guarantees of health and wealth and healing in our lives. Sometimes God in his great love and in his great wisdom allows us, grants us wealth and health and healing in our lives. Sometimes not. There are no guarantees in life. But what is our guarantee? What is our guarantee? What keeps us to the end? What calms our troubled soul? The guarantee is Christ. The guarantee, our promise, is that in Christ we will rest, we will rise, and we will receive our glorious inheritance. And that changes everything about today. It changes what we live for. It changes what we hope for. It changes our purpose. It changes our direction. It changes our fear. And it changes our confidence. People of God, today we begin another year of our lives. For some of you, this is your ninth year. For some of you, this is your 90th year. And everyone in between. But this truth is the same for us all. That we will rest, we will rise, and we will receive God's inheritance. C.S. Lewis, at the end of his Chronicles of Narnia, at the end of Book 7, writes these words. All their life in this world, and all their adventures in Narnia, had only been the cover and the title page. Now, at last, they were beginning chapter one of the great story which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. Our lives here on earth and all the adventures that we have on this earth, in this life, all the successes and failures, joys and sorrows, hopes and disappointments, are only the cover and the title page. And we go on our way until the end. And one day we will rest and we will rise to the chapter one of the great story, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. So friends, brothers and sisters, Daniel's God is our God, and his promise is our promise. You will rest, you will rise, and you will receive. So with these words, we can indeed, like Daniel, go our way in peace and confidence. In the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Together we say, Amen. Amen.